Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be checking out the emulation performance of the Poco X3. This is another budget offering from Xiaomi in their Poco line. And overall, this is definitely a solid device if you're looking for a budget Android phone because this is coming in anywhere from 220 to 270 depending on where you pick it up and the storage variant. Now the one we're going to be taking a look at in this video is the lower end model and really the only difference is the internal storage coming in with 64 gigabytes. I paid $230 for this on eBay, and I have to say, this is a great performer at that price point. In this video, we're going to be testing out some of our favorite emulators on the X3, from Dreamcast, N64, Sega Saturn, we'll go up to GameCube, Wii, PS2, and we'll throw some PSP in here. This is not a full review of the Poco X3, but if you're looking for something like that, just let me know in the comments below, and I can get something made up. Mainly, I've had a lot of my viewers ask me to pick this up and test out some emulation, so that's what we're going to be doing in this video. But before we jump right into it, I just want to give you a quick rundown on the specs here. So obviously, we have the Poco X3. The CPU is the Snapdragon 732G. This is an octa-core CPU, two cores running at 2.3 GHz and six running at 1.8. The GPU is the Arduino 618. We have 6 gigabytes of LPDDR4X RAM, and the RAM stays the same even if you opt for the higher end version with more internal storage, but both of them will support a micro SD card up to 512 gigabytes. We have a 120 hertz IPS display coming in at 6.67 inches with a resolution of 1080 by 2400. And out of the box, the X3 is running Android 10 with MIUI 12, but there are plans to upgrade this to Android 11. So with the specs out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into some emulation. First up, we have Dreamcast using ReDream upscaled to 1920 by 1440 no frame skip. This is running great. I haven't had any issues at all. The Snapdragon 732G is definitely handling this emulator quite well. So all in all, as long as the game's compatible with this ReDream emulator, you shouldn't have any trouble playing Dreamcast on this device. I got a couple more Dreamcast games to test here, and then we'll move over to something else. N64 using Mupin 64 Plus FC from the Google Play Store. I did upscale to 800 by 600, and I think we could go higher with some easier to run games. But overall, N64 is going to run really well on this machine, and this is definitely my go to emulator when it comes to Android devices. Mupin 64 Plus FC works really well on lower and mid range devices. So when it comes to Sega Saturn, I was actually pretty impressed. Now we're not able to use the Beetle Core inside of RetroArch, but if you want to use the standalone version of Yobase and Shiro, or even the Yobase and Shiro Core in RetroArch, you shouldn't have any trouble with Sega Saturn using the Snapdragon 732G. It actually performs way better than I thought it would, and some of the harder to emulate games just run great. Moving over to PSP using PPSSPP, Tekken 6, 3x resolution using the Vulcan back end, really good performance here. Now when it comes to the harder to emulate games, you might have to drop this down to 2x, but overall performance with PSP on the Poco X3 is phenomenal. So we're going to take a look at two more PSP games running, and then we're going to move over to GameCube and Wii. I'm not sure how well this is going to handle it, but we'll give it a shot. Nitrous. 
All right, taking it up a bit to GameCube using the Dolphin emulator. And even though the Dolphin emulators come a long way on Android, you still need a pretty beefy device to run most of these games at full speed. Now that doesn't mean that the X3 won't run GameCube games. There's actually several games that'll be fully playable on this device, but when it comes to the harder to emulate stuff like Automotalista or F-Zero GX, this device just doesn't have enough power to push it at full speed. And even when I move over to some of the games that I consider mid-range games, like Soul Calibur 2 here, we're not quite at 60, but it's trying its hardest. It's really close. By the way, I'm using the OpenGL back end with this game here. I also tested Vulcan, and with this specific game, it does perform better with OpenGL on the X3, but we're not quite at full speed. I'd still call this pretty playable here for a $230 device, though. But like I mentioned, this device just doesn't have the power to push the harder-to-run games like Automotalista here. As you can see, we're a little over half speed, and when it comes to easier to run GameCube games, like Sonic Colors, we're still lagging behind just a bit. This game should be running at 30, but we're around 25. I also wanted to test out some 3DS using the Citra emulator, it's recently been updated. And on the Snapdragon 732G, it's performing way better than I thought it would. This is DOA Dimensions, and it is running at full speed at 1x resolution. Every once in a while you'll see a hiccup here and there, that's just the shader cache. But this is pretty impressive for a mid-range Snapdragon device. The Citra team has been doing an amazing job with Android development, and as we know, it's only going to get better and better as time goes on. So a lot of these mid-range devices will be able to run these games at full speed. When this was first released, they recommended a Snapdragon 855, 855 Plus, or an 865, and I'm sure that's still the recommendation. But as you can see, the Snapdragon 732G is doing a great job. And finally, we have PS2 using Daemon PS2. Here's Tekken 5, and I have it set to the fastest. I've went into the debug settings and tested out everything I could. The sound's at full speed, but as you can see, there's so many hacks going on, like frame skip, the game is super slow. And when it comes to Tekken 5 and mid-range devices, I've actually had good luck in the past, but it looks like it's not working great on this device. But it's kind of weird, because when I move over to GOW2, we're getting better performance with this game than we did with Tekken 5. So in the end, I think the Poco X3 performed really well given the price point. Coming in at $230 for the 64GB model or $270 for the 128GB model, I do think this is an awesome little deal if you're looking for a budget Android device. Now if you don't mind going used or second hand, you can always pick up a Snapdragon 845 or an 855 device for a little bit more, maybe around the same price if you pick one up refurbished or renewed from Amazon or eBay. But if you're looking to buy a new device and you have a budget of around $250, I think the Poco X3 is definitely a phone to look into. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, if you're interested in seeing a full review on this device, just let me know in the comments below, otherwise I'm sure there's tons of other ones on YouTube. But I have gone through and run some benchmarks and tested out some native and Android games, and overall this is a great performing device given the price point. It's definitely not a flagship device and the price really says it all. At $230, I personally think this is a great budget Android device for everyday use, native Android gaming, and even emulation as we saw in this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you're interested in picking one of these up, I will leave a few links in the description. But like always, thanks for watching.